Okay, well, I'll go ahead and start talking and, and before um, our lovely professor today, Jen, um, who some of you know, right? Uh, get started. I'm going to kind of introduce what we're doing. So welcome to Educamp 2020. Um, unfortunately, this is how we have to meet each other. I wish things were different. Uh, we would love to have you on campus and staying in the dorms and having a lot more fun than seeing our heads moving around in a video. Uh, but COVID has kind of changed things for us this year. And so we're just going to work with what we got. And we figured we'd love to see you. And hopefully you all felt the same way. And we're gonna give you some content this week. Um, so today we're gonna to talk about lesson planning, but we have multiple days this week that you can tune in. It's not all day, it's just an hour here and there. So I encourage you to tune into all of the sessions. Um, tomorrow is actually gonna be a panel of alumni. So people who've gone to FGCU that are currently teachers. We also have some alumni who are not teachers, but doing different things in education in the field. So I encourage you, if you've not already registered, register and tune in for that tomorrow. On Wednesday, we're going to have a fun session, Learning Through Play, um, with our STEM presentation. So Dr. Susan Cooper, who's one of our faculty members, is going to be presenting on that. Thursday, we're going to be learning, um, working with students with disabilities. So we have one of our uh, professors, Dr. Noel, um, I always mess up her name, Belasmo, I think it is, um, is going to be uh, talking with us about that which is really exciting because she has a lot of things that relate to all of you with pop culture and all of that. Uh, so tune in for that. And then on Friday, after we've inspired you all through FGCU, uh, we want you to become an Eagle. So we want you to join us uh, and come to FGCU. And of course, we'd love for you to be in the College of Education to learn to be a teacher. Uh, so we hope all of you are prepared and excited today. Uh, while Jen is talking, I'm going to ask all of you to kind of mute your mics just so in case you have dogs barking or in my case, dogs and babies crying. Um, we want everybody's mic muted while she's talking, but we want you all to be engaged. So if you have questions throughout the session, um, you know, that's up to Jen on how she wants to handle questions, but we want you all to be engaged in, and really feel like we're together, even though we are not um, close together this time. So we're virtually um, together. We're virtually together. So first, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves because we have other people on the call um, other than myself and Jen. I like you just heard Tim. Uh, so why don't we start with Tim? Why don't you introduce yourself um, and we'll kick it off that way. Actually, I don't even know if I introduced myself. Um, I'm Lauren. Um, some of you have met me out at your schools. Uh, some of you may have come to camp last year and, and met me there. Or maybe you got a text message from me this morning and I woke you up and I apologize for that. Uh, but I am actually in the College of Education, and my job is to recruit all of you. So I have kind of helped put this EduCamp together, but I am not the shining star. Our faculty are the ones that are really making this worthwhile. So I'm going to um, make sure that you all have a wonderful experience by putting the best faculty uh, in your viewing screens from your couch or wherever you are today. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tim so he can introduce himself. Sure. Thanks. Um, so I'm Tim Murphy. Um, I'm the social media specialist for the College of Education. Um, so a lot of what I do is, you know, managing our social media accounts. Um, I manage parts of our website. Um, the fun stuff that I get to do is, you know, help promote events like this on social media, um, connect with you guys through those channels. So I will say um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as at FGCU underscore COE. Um, please follow us if you're not already. You'll see, um, you know, you'll kind of get to see what the College of Education is about, um, you know, what our students are doing, what our faculty is doing, um, fun things that, that will be happening on campus again, hopefully shortly. Hopefully, um, you know, this isn't, uh, we're not always doing things virtually for much longer. Um, but you can kind of see what, what, what we're about, what we do, um, that kind of thing, and stay connected to the college. So, and that's, that's it for me. Candy, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Candy Chamberlain. I'm the one that's been bugging you with all the emails. And this is my fourth year, first year virtually, of doing EduCamp. So I'm really excited. I hope you all have a great time. We've worked a lot to get this out there for you. And we just, we want you to become eagles. And of course, in the College of Education. Yes. Um, I saw Dr. Desmore on the call, but it, she might have dropped off. Um, so Kiana Desmore is our assistant dean in the College of Education. So she oversees all of these efforts. 
Um, and if she comes back on the call, um, you'll see her uh, just so you know who she is that so we don't have to interrupt the um, session. And then of course, our star of the show today, Miss Jen Fullwider. She is actually a professor. Sorry, that's my child. Um, she's new, she's three months old. Um, so <laughs> we have Jen Fullwider. She's a professor with us who does our intro to education a course. So you actually could take a class with her. So that's really exciting that we have her here today and I'm gonna turn it over to her. Hi everybody, I am Jen. Um, Lauren, I love you, but I am not professor yet. I am still working towards that designation. Um, I do teach the intro course here on campus. My normal job uh, is I am the professional development schools coordinator. So some of you sometimes see me out in the schools. I think I see Jules, is that you Jules? Hi honey, welcome back. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on campus whenever that happens, whenever life, if life ever goes back to normal or I'll be in the schools. Um, this actually coming semester, I will be supervising student teachers as well. So there is a good chance that I will be in schools and could run into any of you. Um, so with that said, uh, we can get started on our presentation. I have a little bit of a Prezi put together, um, which I am not very good at. So you're gonna have to bear with me. Uh, this is my third year doing camp. Um, I'm one year behind Candy, about decades behind her in age, but about one year behind her uh, <laughs> in camp. So I love you. Uh, I will be relying on my team members to help in case I screw up. So, all right. Uh, I have share screen access, right? Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to give that to you right now. Hold on. Okay. You should, you should be. Angry. Okay. All right. So here we go. Bear with me, peeps. Hey, Jen, while you're doing that, why don't you say how you want them to ask questions or whatnot? Because that wasn't mentioned. Oh, okay. Can you get, hold on a second. Can you see my screen peeps? Mm -hmm. All right. So if you have questions, uh, speak up. There's a small group of us and uh, I will not, I, I'm not sure if Zoom has that chat option, but I will not because I'm sharing my screen. I will not have access to the chat box um, readily. So if you have questions, concerns, pipe in, whatever you'd like, um, just yell it out. Okay. Um, that's it. So this is our lesson planning section for the week. Uh, before we get started though, I want you to know that lesson planning um, is a huge part of being an educator. You have to have a plan. If you do not plan, then you typically fail. We need to have a GPS of where we're going and what we're doing and that's what this is about today. I'll try to keep it fun for you because lesson planning is, it's a big deal. But before we get started uh, with lesson planning, I'm gonna show you what the, our first part of our session is going to be what you are going to create by the end of the week, but I'll show you what mine looks like. So when you're teaching, you need to make sure that your students know who you are. You typically have 30 seconds to capture a student's attention. Now, for those of my high schoolers out there, you know that if a teacher bores you in the first 30 seconds, that class could be doomed. Am I right? You guys can speak up whenever you want. You get 30 seconds to catch a kid's attention. So just putting it out there. So who is this lady on your screen? Uh, my name is Jen, Jen Fullwire. Very small. Um, I am the PDS coordinator here at FGCU. Uh, so I work with our local schools to help promote student teaching and uh, clinical experiences. Before coming to FGCU, I was a special education teacher. Uh, here in Florida, we call them ESE, but uh, we did not call that in Ohio and Michigan. And I taught for 13 years in middle school, high school, uh, mostly urban settings. And I never would have left the teaching field, but I was offered an amazing um, opportunity in higher education and I took it. Teaching was the best career choice I could have ever made. Just putting that plug in there. So this is uh, all about me. This is my husband, TJ. I've been married to the dude for 18 years and um, as the caption shows, poor guy, and anybody who knows me can agree, poor guy. We live in Fort Myers and we have three sons. Um, I am old, my oldest will be 21 in October. I have 21, uh, 16 and 14. My 16 and 14 year old both go to Fort Myers High here in Fort Myers. And hopefully 
uh, within the next two years, my name will change to Dr. Fulwider. I'm working on my doctorate here at FGCU. Um, my boys, the, it's, this picture is spread out. They're not that wide in real life. Um, these are my boys, and this uh, in the first picture and the next picture is the entire full lighter crew. All of us. Um, that picture is outdated because as of today, at 5'11", I am the shortest person in my household. Every single human uh, towers over me. So everybody has something that makes them lose it and laugh uncontrollably. What makes me laugh uncontrollably, and I really, really battled putting this in here, but I wanted you to know who I am, anything related to flatulence and fart jokes. My colleagues here can attest to my immaturity in that area. So memes related to this topic, um, I will laugh until I have tears in my eyes. Jules and anybody from last year or the year before, you can also attest to this. Fun fact, I have lived all over the country. I am a former military brat. So Michigan to Alaska, to, uh, California, two cities in Ohio. Um, Lauren, yes, I do need to make my screen full screen. Show me, girl. If you click, I think if you click the present button. Oh, my bad. At the top, see that little blue button over in your right-hand corner? I think it'll be in your right-hand corner. It is for me. Oh, my bad. Let's see. Let's ah. try that. Yay. Thank you, boo. So I've lived everywhere, Wilmington, North Carolina, New Jersey, Fort Myers, uh, everywhere. Okay, now how do I go to my next screen? You should just, I think if you just click. Hit the space bar, Jen, if you have a space bar. Yes. Okay, so my phobias. Candy, you might hear her chuckling in the background. I hate mannequins, but I couldn't find any appropriate mannequin pictures online because some of them are just a little shady. So dolls, anything with eyeballs, especially mannequins and porcelain dolls. Spiders, I hate spiders. And rubber bands. I'm scared to death of rubber bands. I got shot in the eye once in high school and ever since then. So people like Candy and other in our hallway will chase me around with the rubber band gun in their fingers and they think it's funny. So um, those are my phobias. Face bar. And of course, my phobia is the screen that stays. Blah. <laughs> All right, let's move. All right, this is my favorite movie. If it'll work, I don't know if it's going to work. All right, Tim, can you help me with this one or no? I think if you click control, I think I'll yeah, let you play it. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Press and hold control and then click it. You guys are awesome. Anyway, it's probably not going to work. I'm not getting it to work without it. Time. And if it doesn't work, then just so you know, my favorite movie if is Dirty Dancing. There you go. It, I was going to say, if you have the link outside of this, I can put it in the chat. Yeah, it's just Dirty Dancing. Now, Jen, is it Dirty Dancing the original or the new version? I like both. I like um, Havana Nights. I like the soundtrack on Havana Nights, but the first one, that's my fave. That's my fave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nobody put me. Baby in the corner. Okay. Well, I, I, I remember the more, more immature lines, which I'm not going to repeat on this. <laughs> but... Um, uh, Jennifer Grey doesn't look the same anymore and Patrick Swayze is dead, so it's hard for me to watch this one and I can't watch Fast and the Furious anymore either because mm. Walker is no longer here. You're welcome. All right, so um, I was a teacher in Ohio and Michigan. Some of the questions I'm asked uh, when I present is my, what my, my best moments were, worst moments, how did I end up here and what I do it again. My best moments were always related to students getting that aha moment if they were struggling with um, a content or even a social skill, when a student finally got it, that aha moment is something that you'll never forget. Worst moments, 
uh, when families are struggling and it's it, it's the student also struggles in the schools. So if I, you know, and if I can't be the one to help um, solve that problem, that's always really hard and it will happen. It's part of our jobs. How I ended up here, like I said, I was a teacher. I was offered a position in um, the college at University of Toledo in Toledo, Ohio, and I took a massive pay cut and went to go work at the university. I then was interviewing out for positions and just to see what would happen. You never get hired your first time out, especially in a national search. Oops. So uh, I was interviewed here in Florida. I thought it was going to be a 30 hour trip to Florida. And eight weeks later, my family moved 1200 miles south. And I got, oh, well, because I got the job, if that's not obvious. So um, three years ago last week, uh, I moved to Florida. And would I do it again? In a heartbeat in a heartbeat. Uh, being a teacher was the best thing I could have ever done with my professional career. I stayed in teaching for 13 years. Teaching then took me into administration and higher education. And now I get to work with teachers. I get to work with students and I get to do things like this with Educamp um, and my colleagues. So would I do this again? In a heartbeat. Uh, minus the humidity. But she loves the thunderstorm. So, but we've gotten, okay, anybody can speak up. We've gotten hosed in storms this, this season. It's been crazy. Um, we got hosed. I, I am bitter. So what you will always find near me is chapstick, EO, chapstick, coffee. I always have coffee and some kind of lotion, whether it be bath and body, always have these things near me sure why that was there. So enough about me. Before we get started on today, we need to know what we're doing today. And that is what we're calling our objectives. Our objectives are what is the purpose of what we are doing? When you were a teacher, before you jump in and start teaching anything, you need to know what your long-term, your short-term and long-term goals are going to be for that, for that year, for that month, for that unit, for that lesson. So here are some of the things I would like us to be able to walk away knowing how to do or to complete when we're done today. We will be exploring sea palms, which is uh, the Florida Standards um, website. Uh, I've never had access to something so cool until I moved to Florida. And I'm telling you right now, it is the bomb.com. It is the most amazing tool that teachers have in their arsenal. I mean, besides our shining personalities. Uh, after this lesson, we, the learners, will be able to define the words standard, learning objective, activity, assessment, and differentiation. At the conclusion of our lesson, we will create a, you will create a presentation describing yourselves to your future students. You will have all week to do it. It's clearly not going to be due in this little hour framework. And uh, you will present it to me an email at some point this week if you choose to do so. And then working with Tim, Lauren, and Candy, we are going to figure out a way to share out with our EduCamp peeps um, and brag about your work. You can use whatever platform you choose to use. You can, however you wanna do it. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the session. So those are some of the things I'd really like to get done today. Those are our objectives. They are our plan for the day. I cannot see any faces because I am screen sharing. Are there any questions before we jump on, before we move on? Right. So what is a lesson plan and why can't we just wing it? Uh, I am typically a procrastinator. So when I became a teacher, this was really hard for me to learn how to do. Um, simply put, your lesson plan is your GPS to a successful learning journey. You need to have a plan for where you're going. Um, I say GPS because my colleagues and anyone in my life will know, I have the worst sense of direction and cannot find my way out of a wet paper bag. Literally, it, it's, I would get lost in my own house if my children weren't leaving messes everywhere. I, I have to have a lesson plan, otherwise I'm gonna go off uh, and find something shiny and lose my track. So we have to really have a GPS and a plan of where we're gonna get from A to B. Now, I do apologize for this screen because um, it's really bad, it's hard to read, but, in the real world, when we're not virtual, um, and maybe I'll email this, have Candy or one of the, our peeps email out a document like this to our students so they can actually see it. I couldn't fix it in here. 
A lesson plan is your roadmap, it's your GPS. It's how you get from A to B, to C to D to E to everywhere. And it is intensive. It's a very, very arduous process, but it is something that becomes second nature and that you learn to do in your sleep. This is the approved annotated format that we use in the College of Education. We are not gonna be doing all of this. We have an hour and I want you to have fun. I don't want you to fall asleep on me. So we're only gonna be talking about a few sections of this in the most important parts of a lesson plan. So the most important part of your lesson plan are the standards. Everything we do, uh, especially in the state of Florida when you're teaching, has to be aligned to a content standard which is approved by the state of Florida and it goes even more beyond that. So everything that we're teaching has to have a purpose that has to be aligned with an approved content standard, meaning approved, uh, the best way of thinking, the best way of learning. Every student before they graduate has a certain level of proficiency they have to meet in different content areas and these standards help to guide teachers, families, educators, policymakers towards those goals. So, I don't know if this is gonna work again because, oh, here, oh, yay, it did. So C Palms, we talked about this earlier. All of you can have your own C Palms account. Um, I did try cheating and, I'm sorry, not cheating, but improvising and creating some uh, fake profiles in C Palm, like a SAC account you'd have on social media, but you can't. You have to, if you're gonna, if you, to register as a teacher in C Palms, you actually have to work for a particular district or university. So I'm gonna show you what my screen looks like as a teacher and how you find standards to develop a lesson plan. And actually I will show you the less, the, some of the standards that I used to get where we are today. Believe it or not, today's lesson was developed based on a standard. All right, so I have an account. I will show you how to make a student account as well. Where's my standard? All right, so I already, so what you do, so here I'm in the standards, and we have all of these different hyperlink content standards that all of Florida bases, K-12 bases their education on. All of these, anything that you can find interesting. Everything is here. So everything that you're learning in high school at Immokalee High School or Riverside, wherever you are, your teachers are bringing your, pulling your standards from this website. So, but I'm going to cheat and type in the standard that I used for today. So my content standard today I chose was to create an online content, e.g. web page, blog, digital portfolio, media, using advanced design tools. This was the standard that I picked today. So at the end of this lesson, you are going to hopefully be able to meet the standard, creating online content, which you will be. You'll be creating some kind of either a slideshow, a Prezi, something with digital content. So this was one of the standards that I focused on today. But more fun, let's go to the more fun stuff, in my opinion. I'm going to pick, okay, actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one of our students, um, one of you needs to yell out a subject or something that you find interesting that you know that you are doing. Whoever speaks up first, that's what I'm picking. Biology. <laughs> Biology? Yes. And biology. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to science and I'm gonna do the drop down menu. Biology is typically high school. So I am gonna try grades nine through 12. See what I'm doing there? So I picked science because bio is typically in science. And I'm gonna go down to high school. So we have other grades. We have grades K2, 3, 4, 9, 12. We have the different constructs, body of knowledge within science. We have physical science, life science. I'm gonna pick life science because it's typically, I think that's where bio is gonna fit. And I'm gonna hit this little button. And in high school, these are the key standards that must be known 
in science for high school. So you have um, the clusters, you have organization and development of living organisms, diversity and the evolution of living organisms. So since somebody said bio, let's do this one. And I click on this standard area. So it's all right here. And then we get this whole, whole page of different resources. Look at this, we've got benchmarks, we've got related resources, constructs, context. So what my favorite part is, especially when I teach my intro to teaching class and my students have to produce lesson plans, I go down to related resources and I look at lesson plans, text resources, tutorials, all of that. I'm gonna pick lesson plans. And why this is important for me, for our teachers, is that the lesson plans Guys, here's the woo, woo is in CPOMS. It's already been vetted out as being fabulous lesson learning objectives for students. So I can pick whatever one of these area lesson plans that I want to do. See this? There's just tons. Human versus a superbug. Oh, I gotta see this. So then the entire lesson plan, all the resources, everything that you need to be able to do this, these lesson plans is here. Here, guys. And this one is focused on E. coli. Oh, that sounds yummy. So there's the rubrics, which are how you grade, recommendations, there's blanks, there's worksheets, there's just everything. And then you adapt it to what you want to do and to what your students can do. So this is CPOMS, it's all right here. It is so cool. I could sit here and play on this for hours and I have the attention span of a gnat. So if this can keep my attention span for more than 30 seconds, we've hit gold, all right? So that's where you get CPOMS, that's where you get your standards from. Now, as a student, Go back to home because you're not a teacher just yet. You're going to go, I am a Florida student, and you're going to click. You're going to go to floridastudents.org. And here is an entire resource for the student site. Sorry, my email keeps going off. It makes me sound like I'm important, and I'm really not. So we have. Let's see, grades six through eight. We've got grades nine through 12. Biology. Boom. Look at this. So for students, let's say that you're struggling or you're having a hard time or you're doing virtual learning, which we all know is fabulous. And let's say you have an assignment for biology and you need to analyze the movement of matter. matter. There's tutorials here. Resources to help you as the student. All of these things are here. So when you are doing your science this year or any topics this year, don't forget this website. All right. I'm going to X out of here, I think. And go back to this, I think. Candy, your head's in my way. So by the way, I have the best virtual background. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't have the right screen. So some of you may have seen my Tiger King. I have the Tiger King background for my virtual background, but I can never get it to work appropriately. So, um, you know, my kids would be so mortified if they knew I admitted that. We're gonna get you a green screen. I, I hung up a green sheet, but it was too wrinkly. Oh no. Yeah. So, all right. Here's one of the lesson plan. I'm not really sure why I included it in here, but I think I'm, Tim, I'm going to have us maybe email this out to the students so, so they can see it. Yeah, we can do that. I'm with the college because I just could not get it to work in here. Okay. So we have Florida standards. We have essential questions in a lesson plan, which is what are we trying to do? What is the big fun question? Show you the rest of this. We have learning objectives, which I think is the next section. Oh, that's ugly. Um, lesson and learning objectives. What do we want our kids to learn? What is what is what is that? So all of this mess that's right in front of you, 
is just a convoluted way of saying what an objective is. What do you need to have? How are you guiding? So you found your standard, you found your biology standard, and now you want to, we know that we eventually want to meet proficiency or level of understanding in biology, but how are you going to get there? So what is the point of this lesson? What do you want your students to know when they're done with this lesson? All objectives contain four parts. So when you come to college and you write a lesson objective, I will be grading you on those four parts. Uh, in this slide, it's labeled differently than uh, how I, I'll show you a shortcut in a minute, but it's, this, is, this is our approved lesson plan. So you need to have a learning condition, the level of proficiency, the target concept, and then the behavior, and it has to be measurable. And I'll tell you about that in a second. So in a sample learning objective, we're gonna do this together, peeps. After reading the given story, students will write four complete sentences with complete, with 100% accuracy that describe the setting of the story, state the main character, describe the problem that arises in the story, and provide the solution. So, I have a little bit of an easier way of remembering this for a lesson objective, and I'll show you. Remember this, all lesson objectives have an A, B, C, and D. Your audience is who, your behavior is what. What are your learners going to do? The condition is how and when those behaviors will be shown and the degree what level of accuracy. So I'm going to go back a page and we are going to tear apart that little sample objective and you're gonna tell me what the audience is, the behavior, the condition, and the degree. So, oh, really? Hold on, peeps. All right, so let's look at that sample learning objective, which is right here. After reading the given story, students will write blah, blah, blah. So if you had to look at this objective, tell me who the audience is. Somebody yell out, who is your audience? Who's the A of this objective? The students. The students, yes, exactly. Okay, what is the B? I may remember the B, what's the B and the A, B, C, D? Behavior. Boom, what is the behavior? What will students what, be able to do? What they would learn. What, wait, wait, okay. what was the question again? What will students be able to do at the end of this lesson? What do I want to do? Um, wouldn't they answer with full accuracy? Close, close, close. What are they going to do to show me they understand the lesson? What are they going to do? Describe the setting. The setting. Yeah, describe, describe the setting with full accuracy. Think, how are they going to do it? Right. By describing. Thank you. Write four full sentences. They have to write four full sentences with, and whoever just said that setting of the story, the main character, describe the problem. Yes, you guys, that whole section is the behavior they need to show me. Behavior, it needs to be measurable and it needs to be viewable. If I wrote in there, my students will understand main character. Can you see me understanding main character? Be real. If Jules, can I see if Jules understands main character? No, because she could be playing on her phone. If I wasn't teaching, I'd be playing on my phone right now too. Okay? You need to show it's gotta be measurable and it's gotta be observable. What's the condition, the when, the how? What is the condition? How have I supported the student? What, have, what, what's, what is the condition? I bet nobody can get this one. You guys read the story? Ah, oh, you got it. I'm, that Joel, thank you, Joel. After the given story, that's the condition. How did I set these students up for success? And the D, what is the D? Degree. Degree of accuracy. And what is the degree of ac accuracy here, peeps? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I want these kids to see it. To have one hundred percent accuracy. Okay. All right. Did you guys cheat and look at this ahead of time? I'm kidding because it wasn't done ahead of time. You couldn't have.
So remember, when you're writing an objective, the A, the B, the C, and the D, that is, we have so many ways and fancy words out there to tell you how to write an objective. Just remember A, B, C, D. And Tim or whoever, I think we can probably share this out, the actual Prezi out. Yeah. If people want, minus probably anything about me. <laughs> we, can, we can get anything, um, you know, we'll do, we can do it after this. Anything that you want to okay. send them, like in an email, Content. you can compile it and send it to them. Yeah. Okay. You walk, dude. And the headphones, that's a good look for you. I think you should wear them you at like, work. You like at work? Yeah, yeah. I, it's a good look. Yeah. All right. So assessments. When I was a student, this was the most boring part about being, becoming a teacher, but I was wrong. It is probably the most important part. Can anybody tell me what in God's name is an assessment and why is it important? Why do I need to assess your learning? To know where you stand. Booyah. Have you guys ever had a teacher, and be honest, because I'm not going to rat you out, have you ever had a teacher that's teaching a lesson and he or she is going on and on and on and half people are posting on Snapchat because the teacher the has- The teacher's to boring. Boom, boom. And the teacher's not taking a pulse on what's going on in the classroom. And if you're not engaged with the lesson and you're on Snapchat or you're on Insta or you're doing whatever it is that we do, and I say we because I'm guilty too, you're not learning the content. You're not learning why you're there. So assessing is really keeping a pulse on what is going on with your students learning because it really is multifaceted. And there's two ways to assess, there's two technical terms to assess how somebody's learning. And it's formative and it's summative. And in every lesson plan format that you'll do in the College of Education, you will have to write out for this and for the state for your um, when you become a teacher and for all those things. There's formative and there's summative. Formative, keep in mind, is as you are learning, as the students are learning, as you're going through. So if I look up from teaching and I see that people are playing on Snapchat, I need to stop what I'm doing and reevaluate how I'm teaching right then and there to get my kids back on track. And that is how you formatively assess where your students are learning. Now, on the other hand, it could be an awesome bomb lesson. And teaching what? Really, Jacob? Yes, you can have one bag of chips. Oh my God, I'm sorry, guys. Go away. He wanted chips, peeps, he wanted chips. But he had pants on. We're making progress. So. <sighs> Virtual any, learning. You know, it happens. At least he had clothes on. It could have been way worse, guys. So we, um, I'm in my closet, by the way, look, I literally hide in my walk-in closet. So, I mean, this is life at its finest. So formative assessment, I need to make sure that I have a pulse on what's going on in the classroom and how my students are learning. A formative assessment can be as simple as somebody asking a question. So for example, can anybody tell me how I formatively assessed your learning within the last six minutes? You may know? You just asked us a question. I asked you questions about the objectives, didn't I? Yeah. And you had to, they were not higher order thinking. They were pretty basic blooms, you know, remembering knowledge. Uh, we'll get, you'll get into that when you get into the college of ed. But uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that you were alive and that you were kind of paying attention a little bit. And that's how I, there's much more formal ways, but that is just how do you keep, keep it simple. A summative, is at the end of learning. So if we think about this as far as semester courses in high school, your formative is gonna be your midterm throughout the semester as you're learning. Your summative is gonna be your EOC or it's going to be your final exams or your final project. The summative shows where students ended in their learning for that process and for that objective. All right, so assessments, when you get to those portions of lesson plans, you have to keep it going. And the best, easiest way to do it is questions. Open, you know, open-ended questions, higher order, and you know, keeping your students awake. That helps, just a little though. So how are we going to get to those objectives? I'm not just gonna put a lesson plan on an overhead or on a Prezi and say, oh, here's my lesson plan, you have to learn it, you're done, yay, I get paid. No, that's not how it works. 
you have to develop an activity to get the learning there. So do you remember in C palms, and you but I'm hoping there's a yes there, I'm gonna be highly concerned. C palms, we found standards, then we found lesson plans, and in those lesson plans, we found activities. And the activity, is the little bus that's going to get us from point A to point B. The lesson plan is the GPS, the structure, the framework, how to get there. The activity is the actual vehicle of getting to where we need to be. So in an activity and a lesson plan, what's gonna happen? How are we gonna teach? What in the world's happening here? That's pretty much what it is. You include an introduction. In our world, in the College of Ed, you script, meaning you write out word for word what you plan on saying to your students. And then what you expect them to say to you. Can anybody tell me why? Why do we script what we're going to say? To make sure you guys hit every point. Like, to make, yeah, to make sure you're hitting every point. And because everything you say matters when you're a teacher. Everything you do, everything you say, every facial expression. Uh, we have our students actually record themselves teaching in their first year, and it is alarming to see the things that you do as a teacher. For example, I'm constantly touching my face or playing with my hair, and you don't know that until you record yourself, and it's a really bad COVID practice, I've learned. But uh, I'm very fidgety when teaching. Well, I'm fidgety all the time, and when you're teaching, it's very apparent. So you really have to be aware of your own body language and the words that you're using. It also helps when you have a lesson plan, things are not going well, that you don't drop words you should not be dropping while you're teaching. Um, just saying, it helps. So when you're planning an activity, you need to keep in mind your developmental level and the learning needs of your students. If I'm teaching a high school biology class, do I want to use coloring books to color in um, parts of a flower in high school? No. I mean, I could for fun later, but not as the main, not as the main learning. And you need to really be um, aware of the developmental levels. I could have abc.com or mouse, whatever that is, you know, for you guys right now, but that's not appropriate for high school students. And I'm not paying for that mess either. Let's just put it out there. All right. So, and does the activity lead to the learning objectives you are aiming for? If I want you to focus on, let's say, biology again, is jumping rope in one spot on one leg really related to biology? It can be if you really are good at justifying, but no, you need to make sure the activity leads up to the learning objectives that you are aiming for. So, I really don't like this. I am going to copy this. I practiced, oh, it did work. This is differentiation. I'm not gonna say another word, just watch it. Can you hear? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I lied. I am gonna say something else. Differentiation is in a lesson plan. Can anybody tell me what that means before we jump into this? What is differentiation? We're going fast, guys, I'm so sorry. Making sure it hits every learning style, like auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. Oh, Jules is on there. <laughs> yes. Right, so you hit different styles and different learning needs. When you are a teacher, you are not going to have all students on the same learning curve. You're not going to have students with the same ability. You're going to have students who could have a hearing impairment. You're going to have students with visual impairments, possibly behavioral challenges, sensory, um, sensory issues. My own son that just came in to get chips, he's an IB 4.3 GPA kid, but he can't hear out of his left ear. So it's always fun with that one. So he always needs to be somewhere near the front of the classroom. Now, differentiation, uh, you will learn more about it this week when Dr. Balsamo teaches the class, and you will learn all about the different ways of incorporating um, learning, uh, different styles of learning. And you always, when you plan a lesson, you always want to plan for your student population during the lesson. And when you know your kids and you know your students, this is much easier. But I will show you a quick brief snippet of what is Universal Design for Learning, UDL. And here we go.
Jen, can you see if you can turn the volume up on it? It's a little bit low. Up? Yeah. No, no, try try on the video itself. Hmm. Pause it for a second. Um. We did practice this, guys. Jen, can you see at the top where it says like you're sharing your screen? Yes. See, there's there's a I don't know if you have it a little box that says view options. No, but I'm looking. No, I don't. So we might have to maybe send this video yeah. out instead of wasting time. Because so I'm trying. There should be there should be somewhere. I think it's on your screen because you're the one sharing somewhere mm -hmm. to like put the audio up for your your screen sharing let me look i'm trying to see if i can do it as the host but i don't think i can okay all right let's try this so i can hear it but it's still very low okay all right, so and Maybe if we're all very quiet and we listen. <laughs> well, or we do this. As teachers, nothing really ever works the way you plan it. It's just the way the world works. So instead of freaking out or getting nervous or panicking, we move on to plan B. That's why we have a roadmap and lesson planning. So my idea for plan B, this is extremely important, but we're not you're gonna spend a lot more time on differentiation later on in the week. This was more of just a, of a glance of all of the different components that are in a lesson plan when you're writing a lesson plan. The end of this week, the end of today's lesson, you're gonna be creating a slideshow and differentiation is important, but it is not the main part of this. It's, as a special education teacher, that was the biggest part of my world. But I'm going to suggest that when I send out, we send out a recap of what we learned today, we will send out this little five minute video um, now, Tim, I do have a concern. I have a couple other videos that are important. Okay. Later can on we, in the slideshow. Can we try something right now? Um, yeah. So I have this thing that says request remote control and I think it might give me control of what's being shared. So I'm gonna click it um, and see what happens. Did you get like a notification? Yeah, Ooh, how cool is that? If there's anything okay. shared, sorry. Let's see. I'm kidding. Yeah. Hi, video panel. Hmm. So what if we, can I, are you doing it? So I, yeah, so I think I have control right so now. So go back into my, okay. Hold on, wait, hold on one second. I'm trying to find, there should be somewhere that gives me the option to like turn up the volume. Um, and I'm just base. Not, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Sorry. Bear, bear with me, everybody. While you're doing that, can I move or no? Yeah, you, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so when we are also writing lesson plans and creating and teaching, you're going to learn more about this as you go on, but um, uh, Tim, the next two slides are the videos in here. Okay, go. On YouTube. Is that are you about to come up to them right now? After this one, yeah. Okay, let me. I'm gonna do some. Uh, okay, sleuthing. Yeah, so I'm gonna do some looking, and you keep going, and then hopefully okay. we can get it figured out. And I'm so gonna you, hold on, I'm gonna give you back in control right okay. now. So Bloom's taxonomy is um, it's a big huh. That's why I put that in there. So it was based on a smart guy from a long time ago. 
you'll learn more about that in college as well, who helped us to structure the domains of learning for students and the cognitive um, functions of learning in humans. And with that, he created this tiered system of learning with remembering at being at the bottom, the first level of understanding and learning. So recalling facts. So, for example, in this lesson, if I said on the, the base level of learning, what is my name? Anybody know? It's on my screen. Jennifer. Boom, Jennifer. and it's Jen. Yeah, my name's Jen. Lauren gets a gold star. Wow, Lauren <laughs> Willis. And first of all, you called me Jennifer, so we are fighting. All right, Willison. I know where you live, boo. Listen, you know, you know why I called you Jennifer. Am I in trouble again? No, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so after remembering, we have a next level up is understanding. Understanding what the facts mean. So every stage of growth is a higher level of learning and a higher level of um, cognitive domain. The highest level is creating. So creating is taking something that we have learned in creating a new content or a new phase of understanding. So it is remembering, understanding, applying, and analyzing, evaluating, and creating. You will not need to know this specifically for right now, but as you learn to be an educator, everything that we do is based on a lot of these cognitive domains that Bloom's Taxonomy describes. So in your lesson or the, the activity you're gonna complete this week, you are going to be remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. When you go to create your own slideshow, you will be demonstrating this entire hierarchy of skills without even knowing you're doing it. So I looked up Bloom's Taxonomy in YouTube to find something a little more fun because the colors are fun, but it can be a pretty boring concept on a Monday in the, you know, in the summer. So I did find two videos that take movies and analyze those movies with blooms and we have yep yeah, we're good on time okay so if tim if you were able to get them to work if not i can probably go to youtube so here's what i'm gonna ask are you one question are you using the zoom app or are you signed in through an internet web browser oh uh. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is it like is it like downloaded to your computer or? Yeah, I have Zoom on my computer. Yeah. Okay, so when you so you might need to stop sharing your screen and then reshare it, and I'll walk you through how it should be able to get your computer audio. So now, when you go to click the share screen button, um, you should get something that has like a basic advanced or files. Oh, cool! Yeah. You know, click click advanced. And then there should be a tab that says music or computer sound only. Uh huh. Got it. And so when you click that and share your screen, now whatever you're playing, the volume should be coming through Zoom. Oh, that is so cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, I am such a dork, but I claim it. So I think I, gotta... I think if anybody talks, it might echo. So don't talk. Close. Yeah, I'll stop talking now. Well, not you, Tim. It'll still echo. Yeah. So it's just, I see, it's just sharing your sound and not your video as well. Well, not to the video yet. Yeah, but like you, like it's saying sharing computer sound. All right, so am I going back in? Mm, hold on. We can hear it, but we can't see it. Well, that smells. Hold on. Thank you guys for being so patient. Okay, stop. So stop sharing again. We're going to try something else. I don't even have the screw. At the top, it should say share, sharing computer sound. You should be able to stop it the same way you started it. Now you got to be all tricky on me. Oh, oh. sorry. It's your face. That's what it is. I just hit oh, it I'm in my tiles in the way. Okay, so I stopped sharing. Okay, hit start. Uh, share screen again. 
and try looking under basic. It should say something like desktop one. Don't click it yet. Cause then in the bottom left hand corner, it should say there should be a checkbox that uh -huh. says share computer sound. There we go. All right. So now you should share your screen with that. And let's see if that works. Mm, it's still just computer sound. This is awesome. This oh, is this so is working cute. with technology. You're so cute. Okay, let's try that. It says share computer sound and optimize screen sharing for video clip. Yes, try that. That sounds great. I, but I'm not to the video yet. That might be why you can't see it. So pull up the video now, because it's still telling me you're just sharing sound. Like I can see a little thing at the top. Because mm -hmm. even though you're not at the video yet, I should. Um, like I should be able to see what you're doing on your screen now. It's still just audio. Man. Okay, that part makes is me Is it the, it's the Bloom's Taxonomy video? Bloom's Taxonomy through Toy Story. So let, why don't you stop sharing your screen and I'm gonna try to share mine with audio. Cause okay. I have it pulled up. Okay. And then if this doesn't work, we're gonna fix then you know we're so. just gonna have to and lauren you are such a good dancer like girl you're on it she's she's keeping us entertained okay so let's see if i can make this work myself and i'm the weird one listen i'm trying to respect not talking so okay again can anybody see what i'm doing right now yes yes okay can you hear it? Yes. All right, here we go. You got So, uh, where are you from? Singapore? Hong Kong? Well, no. Actually, I, I'm, I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. As a member of the elite Universe Protection Unit of the Space Ranger Corps, I protect the galaxy from the threat of invasion from the evil Emperor Zerg, sworn enemy of the Galactic Alliance. Oh, really? I'm from play school. And I'm from Mattel. Well, I'm not really from Mattel. I'm actually from a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. When you and welcome. Say, what's that button do? I'll show you. Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. Oh. Hey, Woody's got something like that. His is a pool strike. Only, it... Only it sounds like a car ran over it. Oh, yeah, but not like this one. This is a quality sound system. Probably all copper wiring, huh? Rub a head in your miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Please be careful. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. Hey, a laser? How come you don't have a laser, Woody? It's not a laser. It's a, it's a little light bulb that blinks. What's with him? Laser envy. Oh, really? Just remember what your old past said. Boy, you got a friend in me. What does a space ranger actually do? He's not a space ranger. He doesn't fight evil or, or shoot lasers or fly. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, impressive wingspan. Very good. Oh, what? What? These are plastic. He can't fly. They are a terillium carbonic alloy, and I can fly. No, you can't. <laughs> yes. I can. You can. Can. Can't. 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 Can. Tell you, I could fly around this room with my eyes closed. Okay, then, Mr. Lightbeer, prove it. All right, then I will. You got a friend in me. To infinity and beyond. I found my moving buddy. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. That wasn't flying. That was falling with style. Man, the dolls must really go for you. Can you teach me that? 
Jen, you're muted. <laughs> Those were college students who were asked to develop um, Bloom's Taxonomy to pop culture or higher to movies. So we have one more, which if you're not a Disney fan, I think Lauren is a fan of the next section of videos. I am not, I've never seen any of it. I have no idea what it means. Sorry, I'm not a potter. I'm, I've never read it. You're not a potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Oh yeah, I like Harry Potter. I thought you were gonna say Star Wars. That's no. my and you've never I seen know. Star Wars. I, I, I saw I made Tanner watch Spaceballs with me last week. But you've never Potter. seen Harry Potter? i I started reading it again, squirrel, shiny things, it didn't work for me. Yeah, but you did you watch the movies? So what happened was I'm very disappointed in you, Jen. They're on that's every what, like every weekend on whatever channel it that is. is that's how I, if that's how I disappointed you in life, we are doing well. <laughs> All right. So is it working, Tim, or no? What's it? What's I don't have what's the next video? Oh. Or let me see if I can get it. Hold on. I'm looking at my privy right now. Yeah, because that one is, I had the link to, and the other one I could not get the link to. Um, Bloom's Taxonomy featuring Harry Potter. Do you want okay. me to share my screen? No, I just need, hold on. It's in the Prezi? Yeah. I'm trying to get it from the Prezi. I mean, this one I don't mind skipping because, you know, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> hold on. Let's see. Because we are, I'm trying to think how much time I'm looking at my screen see how much time we got left oh we're almost done i we have i think i, think I got it hold on okay yep i got it hold on so i'm gonna share my screen in a second one moment please how is everybody else are we all hanging in there yes we are are there any about any of this before we jump into the next section? What am I doing right now? What's the, what's the example of what I'm doing right now when I'm asking you these questions? What am I doing? It's a formative assessment. Boo! So, go, dude, if I had free pencils to throw, I'd throw, you were on it. <laughs> don't ever throw pencils, Jen. Well, you know what I meant. I don't mind. I would throw as long as you caught it. Don't tell on me. All right. All so right, ready? Let's get it. Okay. Everyone can hear it? Oh, let me mute mine. Both of you, this is Devil's Snare. You have to relax. If you don't, it'll only kill you faster. Kill us faster? Oh, now I can relax. Check the king. No, Ron, no! What is it? He's going to sacrifice himself. No, you can't! There must be another way! Do you want to stop Slate from getting that stone or not? Harry, it's you that has to go on. I know it. Not me, not Hermione. Jen, you're saying no more? Jen, you're muted. Jen, I can't hear you. You're muted. 
Um, we've got, this has got about another five minutes on it. We still have about 10 to 15 minutes of content left. Okay, so you want me to stop sharing it? Yeah, don't tell Lauren. Oh, oh hi, Lauren. <laughs> um, so when we send out the updates, that's what we'll do. We'll just send us, if we could send this out. So what I was showing you was that there's a lot of fun ways to take some of the some sometimes boring, not boring, but thick content and make it more relevant to your students. So uh, we could sit there and look at a Bloom's Taxonomy um, graphic for hours. That's what my professors did to me when I became a teacher. Um, and you'll probably endure something similar. But if we can apply to pop culture or apply to what our students are understanding or you know interested in a little bit better, then sometimes it has more of an impact. So that was the whole point of that. And thank you, by the way, for being patient, because as you'll see, especially coming into this coming school year, nothing is going to be the way that you know it. And your patience right now is stellar uh, because when you become teachers, you'll see that this is just part of our world. So um, you'll be thankful that, you know, the toilets flush down the hallway. I mean, that, that's, that's how grateful we get sometimes. I'm speaking from experience. And we have to thank Jen because she went first. So she gets, she gets to be the guinea pig and we find all the issues and smooth them out, unfortunately, on her day. I think I'm more worried about her toilets not flushing down the hallway. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Um, You're working too. from home, Jen. Fix your toilet. <laughs> no, um, teenagers, they smell. Oh, oh, oh. Always blame oh. it on your kids. That's the easy way out. Well, my husband's not home. I'm not going to take the blame. You know, I met in school. You want to be thankful that when you're in a school building, this, the toilets flush. Because I had that happen. Long story. I'm not scaring the kids out of teaching. So um, your mission, if you choose to accept... And this relates back to our objective from a um, few slides ago. What I would like you to do is- Gotta you share your screen again to see the slides. Sorry. You- I, I know, I took over. You, you, I apologize. You're, you're, you're hurting my feelers. Um, not really, you're really not. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, is that better? Yep, there you go. Oh, your mission, if you choose to accept, is you're going to create, why is that green, whatever, you're going to create your own presentation for your future students. I want you to describe who you are today and who you want to be as a teacher. There is no time limit, because I'm the one reading them and looking through it. Um, and you can use a platform that you enjoy. If you want to use PowerPoint, if you want to use Prezi, uh, email me and I'll send you however we did Prezi. There's lots of different formats and fun technology formats that you can do. And the whole point of this is I want you to learn, based on that Florida standard that we cited back, back in the beginning, how to create online content to get a, a message across. And when you become a teacher, you're gonna have to get, your students will not learn from you if they don't know you, if they don't trust you. So this is how you start to get to know your students. Um, back in the olden days, probably from when before Tim was born, we used to write a letter like on paper and like this the thing you used to hold, it's called a pen. Um, and then even sometimes a typewriter. Oh dear Lord. We would write a letter to our families or to our students um, before a new school year started to say who we were because it helps to ease the anxiety of a new school year. So you are going to imagine teaching for your future class, whatever grade level, your dream grade level is, and you're going to create a presentation for your future students to tell them who you are. You can put in, like I did, your favorite things, your phobias if you'd like, but um, the phobias will bite you, not the spiders part, but my colleagues all know my phobias and they make sure to use that against me every chance they get, at least Candy does. So um, just, just keep that in mind. And you will submit it to me email, via email. Uh, for feedback, if you'd like, this is my email, jfullwider.fgcu.edu. And then, um, depending on our gurus here, we will share our presentations with our campers, maybe this whole group. Um, and what's nice with this takeaway is that when you become a teacher or when you join Intro to Teaching or any other teaching-based um, world, you will have a starting point. So who you are this week might be completely different than who you are in five years when you are a classroom teacher. So it's always fun to look back and to see how you've changed. 
So you can include what you want your pretend or your future students to know about you in however format that you choose to put it in. All right, you're not, so I was gonna have you create a lesson plan. Nah, I'm gonna have you create the activity of the lesson plan. You already know that you're meeting the standard because it's all in this Prezi, the standard that I already picked out, and you're, you're making a lesson based on that standard. Now, if you have so much free time and you're so bored and you're so thrilled about lesson planning that you wanna create your own lesson plan for fun, I will be happy to give you feedback. If you wanna email it to me, um, I'll be happy to help you through that if you choose to do so. Um, I can barely get my undergrads to do that for me for a grade though. So um, that's completely up to you. So that is your mission to, should you choose to accept. Any questions on that before we close out on this lesson? Um, are any of you actually gonna think about creating a presentation all about yourselves? Yes, me. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Awesome. This is how you get, good. This is how you get the practice. This is how you this is how you practice create these things. And then you're gonna see what fails. All right. So Jen, I have a question for you. Yes, my love. So when you're teaching intro to teaching and you go over lesson planning, what is the most common, I guess, worry of the students when they're creating a lesson? What is the biggest fear that they have? Do you know that or? Yes, getting up in front of, so they, um, in our intro to class, intro to teaching, not only do they submit their lesson plan to me, they have to get up in front of their, their classmates and present that lesson plan. We don't usually have time for them to teach the entire lesson that they've thought of, but they actually have to present that lesson plan to their classmates. That scares the living life out of them, having to get up in front of other people and talk. That's number one. Number two is their grade. Um, and then number three is standards are scary. You know, we've all heard about Common Core and you know, all of these things surrounding standards and teachers complaining about having to align everything or us. The standards aren't that hard, they're a roadmap. The process is scary. The process looks a lot harder. I mean, it is hard, it's a lot of work. But once you get into it, it makes sense. You know, I just drove up to Mexico Beach, just got back last night, and um, it's an eight hour drive, and I have no sense of direction, remember? I get wet, you know, I mean, lost in a wet paper bag. So I was scared to death until I mapped out where I was going, and you know, GPS and Google helps. But, it's the same thing until you get into it, it's scary. Does that help at all? Lauren? Yes. You're just being nice. Okay. No, it does. We talked about formative and summative assessments. We're gonna close out, at, close out my section with a summative assessment and it's going to be Kahoot. Would anybody like to do a Kahoot? Right, right. Okay. Yes. So I, don't cheat and look at those answers. We're gonna play. How do I get rid of that green thing? Uh, which green? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, you yeah, I can't see what's on your screen. Perfect. That's good. Some stuff. No, no. I mean, we can see what you're doing right now. I just some stuff within Zoom. I can't see like where you put your tiles and stuff like that. All right, you guys ready? Here's your code. Move your screen. I can't. Can we, what, can you tell me what it is? I'll put it in the chat. I got it. Oh, there you go. There's three of you. Uh, Tim, Lauren, Candy, do, do you know how to do Kahoot? Am or I get play, in there. Am I playing too? Oh boy. Oh yeah. Give me Thanks one second. I'm logging in. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Candy, do you know what Kahoot is?
So it's having me create an account. So that's what's taking me so long. All right. <laughs> I'm not a Kahoot uh, expert here. So give me a second. Man, it was my birthday. When's your birthday, Lauren? Well, I just entered it wrong on accident. So. <laughs> Did you make an account? It didn't make me make an account. Me either. Did you do it on your phone? Yes, I'm doing it on my phone. No, Is it just why? went to the pin. Well, I guess I'm maybe I'm an idiot. Um, you oh, should no. search up Kahoot.it. That's usually what like we do. Yeah, you can go to the web browser. Yeah, web browser. Go on that. Okay, I will give it a whirl. You can go ahead. I'll All right. That music is driving me crazy. All right. Can you see, Candy Louise, can you see it? I see it. All right, so what is the best university in college? <laughs> Mine has like a black screen at the bottom, so I can't see like the bottom answer. Yeah, the, the orange one or yellow, whatever you call it. Oh, it's not stretched. Hold yeah. On. First of all, if you want to answer anything other than those top two, I'm not sure <laughs> if that's the correct answer. Oh, good. The third one's a great one, too. Okay, so this is an example of how not to create a question stem in Kahoot because, well, clearly. Um, and nobody got it. I mean, everybody got it right. Oh, 100% success. Funny how that works. All right. So duels. You're up there, Joel, Mariana. Is it Yanaya or you? How do I say it, Yanaya? You're saying it correctly. I get to feed my kids tonight. I it's, maybe. Okay. Why do we need lesson plans? Nice work. Okay. Let's see who's in the top. Jules, Mariana, Joel, the coolest person. That's got to be Candy. And Tim. Because <laughs> if you have to say coolest person, we got problems. What is Sea Palms? That's amazing. I never really specifically set up. So it is uh, Florida's official source for standards info. I didn't have this in Ohio or Michigan. So um, sea palms to me is like, it's like an arcade. It's candy. All right. Jules, Joel, Jules, Mariana, Tim, and Yanaya. Oh, Tim's inching up there. Joel, don't let the, don't let Tim up there. Better keep it on. And oh, Mariana's on fire. All right. Included in a learning objective. Good job. Did anybody check the references in the other answers? So I spent yeah, I did. Doing. I checked. <laughs> and what did it mean? We got what? What two shows are we representing there? Stranger Things. Boo. And of course, what's the other one? It's Tiger King. <laughs> and I, I didn't put Carol Baskin's official name in there because this is an educational platform and I couldn't. Oh my. Hello, all you cats and kittens, or whatever she says out there. You cool oh cats God, and kittens. Should, we should totally do a Joe Exotic day this week. But anyway, go ahead. All right. Joel, Jules, Mariana, Tim is still down there. Yanaya, girl, you better catch up with these you people. You told me you wanted, to, you wanted me to play. I, I think you're cheating. What is a formative assessment? He ain't going to get this one. I think I was fixing something during this part of the presentation. <laughs> what do you say? I said I think I was fixing something during this part of the presentation. Right. Well, and I really didn't. This was tricky. So um, it is part of instruction provides feedback on student learning. I don't like this one because a lot of these could be right. But whoever picked the red one, good job. 
we were at. Joel's on fires, Jules, Mariana, Tim, and Yanaya. All right. What summative assessment? Good job. So the key is, first of all, I have no idea why apple cider was in that picture stem, but whatever. Um, evaluation of students learning after the demonstration, after the lesson. Summative is at the end. So think summative is summary, formative is forming as you're going. All right. We were at Joel, Mariana, Jules, Tim, and the cool cat and kitten down below. All right. So what makes Jen laugh uncontrollably? <laughs> Good job, flatulence jokes. <laughs> See, I'm laughing now because there was a poop emoji. <laughs> and I put it there. <laughs> All right, Joel's on top, Mariana, Jules, Tim, and Carol Baskin. All right, what is differentiation? We really didn't get to go. Oh, wow. That turned out better than I thought. Um, it's actually just so you know, differentiation is delivering instruction to best reach each student ahead of time. You don't want to change the lesson later because you realize that Tim can't see you or that my son can't hear you and you're doing a music lesson. So you want to make sure that you know your students well enough to know that you're differentiating ahead of time. And then every lesson that you create is built around reaching every student um, and letting every student be successful. On top, oh, Mariana is moving up there. Tim, Yanaya, and Jules. And our last one the objective of a lesson plan is. All right, so another one that wasn't completely specified, but you're right, it is to provide step by step directions, set goals, and to find motivation. The objective of a lesson plan is to get us from point A to the next point, to the next point, with everyone still on the train. The lesson plan keeps us all in the same vehicle without anybody falling out the window on the highway. Well, that's the goal. I don't know if it really happens. Okay, so who's my podium? Yanaya has got third place. Get it, girl. Mariana, and number one. All right, Joel, woo! -hoo! If, ooh, there's, so here's a really cool thing to see, you know, that at the end of a Kahoot that is free, this actually tells me who had the hardest time on what questions. And then I can um, tailor my teaching to reach my targets. So formative assessments was tricky for everybody. And so I know that teaching of formative assessments, I did not do a stellar job. So I would need to go back and reteach that content. So not only could I use, well, how did I use Kahoot, first of all? What kind of assessment did I use it for? Formative? The, the sum. Summative. And yeah. if I improve my team <clears throat> and I find areas of weakness and improve it for another lesson, then I'm also doing formative. I'm doing both with Kahoot. And it's fun and it's free. And the cool cat, cool person never even made it to the top three. I'm just, I'm messing with you. That was rude. That was very rude on my part. Okay. Called out. Called out, boo-boo. All right. So let me find my, I'm going to, all right. So, oh, there's a chat. It might be your internet. Are you on what? Oh, that's not me. Okay. So that was um, the end of my presentation, I think. Um, I hope we survived. Thank you for, even with all the glitches and, you know, the trickies. Lesson planning is something we have to do. You cannot be successful without it. 
And sometimes it's a pain in the tushy. It really can be. It's a lot of work. Um, this stupid, silly little thing has been, we've been working behind the scenes for a couple weeks now. Um, and I had the easy part of it. So compared to what everybody else did. So that concludes my section. Before we close out, do we have any questions? Um, we, your mission, remember, is to create a slideshow about yourself to your future students. All right. I will be the, I will be providing feedback and, you know, giving them to you. And then I will be sharing them with our team, um, to make sure that they are shared with somehow with our EduCamp, uh, group. All right. If you want to create a lesson plan because you have nothing else better to do and it's that interesting, God help you for one, but for two, let me know and I'll help you. All right. So thank you for joining your or Lauren, Louise, Boo Boo Bear. So <clears throat> my middle name's not Louise uh, also, but I'll go by the Lauren Louise. That's totally cool. And um, thank you, Jen. And Louise. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. So um, everybody, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little session on lesson planning. I hope this kind of helps you. I know some of you are in our teacher academies. Uh, so if you're having to create lessons, for things that you're learning in high school, this will give you kind of what uh, we're using at FGCU in our intro to teaching to teach students about lesson planning. So this is a, an exciting kind of first look at something that we use at FGCU. Uh, now, I just wanna plug again for our future sessions this week. So we do have a session every day um, and tomorrow is our alumni panel. So if you wanna hear from students who went to the College of Education at FGCU and what they're currently doing in their profession, um, tomorrow is a great time to tune in. Uh, of course, you'll see all of our shining faces again, plus a few new ones. Uh, and bring your questions. We have some questions prepared for the panel ahead of time. But if you guys have questions about what it's really like to be a teacher, please, please, please bring them. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you too. Anybody else have anything to add? Oh, Jen. Oh, quarantine, guys. This is what happens when adults have been under lockdown for too long. Uh, we go nuts. Anyway, so <laughs> have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks. See ya.